Hey guys, today we are checking out a mainstream video card from 2003. It is the ATI Radeon 9600 Pro. Now, I don't know about you, but I've actually never bought a brand new high-end video card. It wasn't that I couldn't afford it, but I could never quite justify the high cost. And the value was usually not that great, and so I always ended up with some sort of a mainstream video card. And the Radio 9600 Pro is exactly such a card. It has all the features of the high-end Radio 9800 Pro, so it's a fully DirectX 9 compatible video card, but obviously it's not as fast as the 9800 Pro, but then it costs a lot less, even to this day, and was much better value. Not just for gamers, but also for ATI, as the Radio 9600 Pro was quite successful. In this video we will check out the performance in Windows 98 and with Windows XP games. There's a bit of a history lesson, so we will have a look at some other cards and how the 9600 Pro fits into the big picture. And at the end of the video you should have a pretty good idea if such a card is something for your retro gaming PC. This 9600 Pro is a model from Sapphire with 128 megabytes of video memory. And I've replaced the stock cooler it came with with a nicer cooler that's quiet and cools the card just a little bit better. This video card was sent to our channel by Electromine. They are a German company selling used computer parts and we do have a 20% discount code for you guys. Check out the details down below in the description. So here comes the history lecture. This should just help to understand how the Radeon 9600 Pro fits in with the other Radeon cards. So we have here a Radeon 9100 with the R200 GPU, also found in the Radeon 8500. And the uh, GPU with the R in front is the flagship processor. Now, they then scale down the GPU uh, and call it RV. So we have the RV200 here. This is a Sapphire uh, Radeon 9000 Pro with the RV200 GPU, which is the value uh, GPU that they put onto the cheaper video cards. Here we have the next generation. This is the Radeon 9700 Pro with the R300 GPU. Now, this generation is quite interesting ATI didn't have a value GPU ready, so there is no RV300. Instead, they were forced to use the large and expensive R300 GPU and yeah, basically unlo uh, disable a few features and then put it in uh, their mainstream cards, which turned out to be the Radeon 9500 and 9500 Pro. And these Radeon 9500 cards, they were extremely popular. Some of the versions could be fully modified into a 9700. And we've done a video on this topic. Check out the card at the top right hand corner of the screen. And these 9500 cards, they kind of spoiled the launch of the 9600 cards. But putting the high-end R300 GPU onto a mainstream video card, it simply cost ATI too much money. And the R300 GPU was also quite loud with a ton of transistors and it was power hungry. You can see both of these cards require an additional power cable from the power supply. And then the next progression with the video cards, we've got the Radeon 9800 Pro with the R350 GPU. Note that this one actually has a proper Molex power connector here, so power uh, increase went even higher. And this is the 9600 Pro. This one has the RV350 GPU. So this time ATI made a brand new chip, uh, a value chip for the mainstream video cards. And look at that, it doesn't have a power connector here. And uh, what's also interesting about this video card is uh, for the first time ATI used an even smaller 130 nanometer process. So on the R300 and R. Uh, 350 they had to use a 150 nanometer process and also in terms of transistors we've got um, 110 million transistors in the 9800 Pro but only 75 million transistors in the Radeon 9600 Pro so the bottom line is this is a much uh, smaller chip it's cheaper to produce for ATI it can clock higher uh, I believe at 400 megahertz this was the highest clocked ATI part at release yet it consumes less power without uh, the need for an additional uh, power connector and this is actually one of the fastest AGP video cards that do not need an external power connector.
Now there are other aspects that I really like about the 9600 Pro. On the older 9700, 9500 and 9800, there's this metal shim around the GPU area and unfortunately it's taller than the actual GPU. So the uh, cooler actually makes no contact with the GPU. So what ATI did, they used this um, yellow thermal pad uh, material and it's really annoying because um, it turns out rock solid after a while and I believe this is the reason why so many 9700 and 9800 video cards don't work anymore because um, people forget about the thermal pads, they don't uh, maintain and replace them and they will overheat and eventually die. So what I always do is I remove the metal shim and then you have to spend quite a bit of time uh, scratching off the, that rock hard yellow uh, thermal paste and then you can reapply new thermal grease, mount an aftermarket cooler and then these cards actually work really well. Now on the 9600 Pro you don't have to worry about any of this, there's no metal shim, there is no thermal pad, it's just normal thermal grease which is really easy to remove with some um, alcohol solution and then you can just uh, maintain your video card, make sure it's nice and clean and it stays cool or install an aftermarket cooler. So in terms of maintenance and um, just cleaning these video cards, reapplying the thermal paste, the 9600 Pro is a lot easier to work with. In terms of specifications, you can look at the 9600 Pro as half of a 9800 Pro, so it's got four pixel pipelines instead of eight. The core clock is 400 megahertz, and the memory has a 128-bit memory interface. We've got 128 megabytes of video memory, and the clock speed is 600 megahertz of effective memory clock speed. Okay, let's have a look at some benchmarks. We're gonna start with Windows 98 SE. So I used the latest Catalyst driver from the AMD website, which is version 6.2. And we have two video cards here. The yellow bar is the Radio 9600 Pro, and the orange one is the Fire GL T2 that we reviewed just recently. And you can see the performance across the board is higher. And even at 1600 by 1200 in Dragon with maximum details, we're getting 121 FPS. So that's excellent performance. And we also have some results for Quake 3. This is with the high quality preset. And once again, it's a lot faster than the Fire GL T2, which is basically a Radeon 9600. And even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 120 FPS. So that's excellent. And we can see that under Windows 98, this video card is fast enough to play around with high resolutions, high quality settings, but also um, turn on image enhancement features like anti-aliasing or anisotropic filtering in the driver. Now if you're interested in very old Windows 98 games, do keep in mind that the 9600 Pro doesn't support palletized textures or table fog. For such games you're much better off with a 3DFX Voodoo 3 card. Uh, all the old games run perfectly fine on such a graphics card. And what I did next was install Windows XP with the Catalyst 9.2 drivers because those are the same uh, drivers I used in the previous video with the Fire GL video card. So first up we've got results for 3D Mark. So we can see a nice boost in performance going from the uh, Fire GL T2 to the Radeon 9600 Pro. And here we have Far Cry. So this is running at very high details. We've got some uh, resolution scaling results going from 640 by 480 to 1024 by 768 and um, at the lower resolutions Far Cry is extremely playable on this video card especially indoors the performance will be even higher than what we see here in these charts. Um, so at 1024 by 768 if you maybe settle for high or medium details then uh, Far Cry will become really playable on a 9600 Pro. Now especially with the Doom 3 and Half-Life 2 uh, performance shown in the last video when we looked at the Fire GL, I got quite a few comments um, and you mentioned that the performance uh, was a lot higher um, as you remember it from back in the day. So I took a closer look at the benchmarks and yes, I really appreciate such comments. Sometimes I got it wrong and Doom 3, um, there are basically uh, two related options for videos. The first one is on the main page. It's uh, about video quality. Now this setting actually has nothing to do with the image quality. It's to do with the amount of video memory of your video card. So if your video card has 64 meg, choose low, choose medium for 128 meg, choose high for 256 meg, and ultra is for video cards that have 512 megabyte of, media, uh, of video RAM. And our 9600 Pro has 128 megabyte of video RAM, so I chose the medium quality. 
And then you need to go to the advanced options and here you can turn effects to improve performance. One of you commented that the shadows in particular are extremely demanding. So what I did was benchmark Doom with all the effects turned on and then did another run with the shadows turned off. And here we have the results. So the orange bar is with all the details turned on and we can see that this is quite a demanding game with these settings on the 9600 Pro. But as soon as we turn off the shadows, we're getting much better performance. Even at 1024 by 768, we're getting 50 FPS, which I consider to be quite playable. And now we're gonna have a look at some gameplay. We have Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, Call of Duty, GDS San Andreas, and Half-Life 2, the collector's edition, which runs without Steam. This version runs a lot better than the current Steam version, which has received updates. So let's summarize what we found and I'll tell you what I think of this video card. I really like it. So let's start with Windows 98. Excellent performance, even at high resolutions, high details, and you can play around with the anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering options. Under Windows XP, we're still getting decent performance, but you have to keep the resolutions and the graphics details in check. If you're looking for a video card to play Far Cry at 1600 by 1200 with ultra details, the 9600 Pro is probably not the right card for you, but early era Windows XP games will work beautifully on this video card. And beyond performance, I really like that this video card is low power. We don't need an external power connector. It's also really easy to maintain. There's no metal shim and uh, thermal pads to deal with. You can just uh, reapply the thermal paste and uh, mount a replacement cooler without too many issues. So there you have it guys, this is a low power AGP video card for old and new and I can definitely recommend it to put into your retro gaming PC. As always, if you found this video interesting, uh, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and that's it. Thank you for watching, I shall see you soon with another one.